Hi everybody, how are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. So before we start, just a tiny uh, point that I wanted to say regarding the um, the post that I that I did about the tasks, the exams of Mercury. Uh, just a reminder for those who are following everything here in uh, in YouTube that there are many things that I am posting um, um, in Instagram, in the blog, in Facebook that I am not posting here and I'm not even speaking about that here. So if you want to follow exactly what I am doing and what the tasks are, I recommend for you to follow also in the blog, which is yosoy.red. Yosoy is, I am in Spanish and red like the color, but it means network. So um, remember to go there or also in yosoy.red in um, Instagram and Facebook, okay? There I will post everything. And of course, for those people that are not following social media, um, I thank all of you, um, if you help them to know everything that I am posting, publishing it here in the comments or uh, in other networks. So um, as I was saying this year, is a lot of work. So uh, this is what we are doing this year. And I, um, so I will explain a little bit about what was the post that I did yesterday. So the post that I did today is regarding um, the concept that until February next year, when we finish this path, we will have three processes of Mercury retrograde. Who doesn't know what is Mercury retrograde? Retrograde, look into the video, watch the video um, before of this one <laughs> from yesterday. This means that um, in the next year, from this February to till the other February, we will be having three processes of this Mercury retrograde, which each one of these processes are three weeks each. So during the, those three weeks, we will be uh, making a review of our physical in the first time. Then in the second three weeks, we will do the emotional. And the last one will be um, the spiritual. Okay, So it's a review of the information. Hmm? So the idea of these reviews that we are going to take is to see if we are, if we were able to assimilate many of the concepts that we have been working through this year. Hmm? So this review is not that we that I am going to make an exam for you. It's, it's not that. It's that the period is about examination of oneself. So uh, I will be remind us all, reminding us all that those this three weeks, we will have to think about um, these reviews that we have to, to, to do regarding our physical, our emotional, and our physical, and, and our spiritual. Hmm? So the proposal that I did to get ready for all this preparation of the, the whole year is just to say the statements before we go to sleep of I am wisdom, I am love, I am, etc. The, the six uh, attributes. Okay, so we start the twen uh, yesterday. We started yesterday, um, the um, February twenty second, and until the March twenty first. All those days before we go to sleep, we just say the affirmation: I am wisdom. I am wisdom. All the same, I am wisdom every day before we go to sleep. And the 22nd of March, we start I am love for all the days saying exactly the same and then will and so on. Okay, so um, so we can 
all be in the same balance, activating the Merkaba of all together. Okay? So that's the idea. Hmm? But as I said, this is written uh, in the social media. Hmm? And it doesn't matter if you didn't begin it from the from the very beginning. Uh, if you didn't start it from the very beginning, you just can start wherever you are. Hmm? So today, Venus, the heart. First of all, let's go to the origin of the name Venus. Venus comes from the word when in in, in the European languages, and this word means desire and love. And we have to go to the very beginning of what is love for a human in the first time. In the first time, love was related with the concept of desire because love was only understood because of reproduction, okay? Now we don't do that, but in the very beginning, it was like that. So love was related with the need to be in touch with others, to relate with others, so we can procreate. This is why the word love and desire is the same, comes from the same root. Um, these two, now we can understand it like desire being the, um, the unconscious point of view and love, the conscious point of view. The word Venus is also the origin of the word to venerate, to um, honor someone, but to venerate someone is to desire a lot someone or something or a god. Hmm? So Venus is the, uh, for the Romans, is the name of the goddess of love, of generation, of creation, of beauty, exactly the same as for the Greek, Aphrodita. So it's important to say that all the, um, uh, the concept of this goddess, um, it was not a goddess by itself. It was a goddess that represented the whole, that put all together, all the moms together. Because for the ancient ones in the ancient traditions, the mother was the main thing. The mother was the original um, element for to create life. So everything was related to the mother, to the spirit of the mom. So it was sacred because everyone came from the mother. So all the mothers together created the concept of one great and sacred mother that was the goddess of life, the goddess of beauty, the goddess of... Um, uh, the goddess of reproduction, of sensuality, of life it's, and love and so on. So all the religions in the traditions of the ancient world, they honor the uterus, the womb, the, the belly of the feminine, the vagina, the boobs, everything, okay, of the, of the feminine body because it was perfect, because it was the mother of creation. And also, of course, this goddess, this concept represented sexuality because in order for something to be born, you need sex. So sexuality, sensuality, and all these things um, uh, were something sacred too. We kind of uh, put it, we kind of separate that concept because we have been uh, many centuries and also uh, uh, thousands of years um, thinking from the point of view of monotheism. So they separated sexuality as something that is wrong. And we, to get, we today think that we need to transcend that in order to get to the divine. But it's not like this uh, because it's about religion and, and, and concepts, okay? For the very beginning of, um, of humanity, the concept of love was related with sex and it was sacred at the same level. Hmm? So 
as all the other gods, all the other divine beings, Venus is not a real being, is not a real person, in the, uh, is a concept that holds all the idea of maternity, of love, of creation. Hmm? Okay. Venus is one of the brightest things in the sky. So we have the sun, then the moon, and then Venus. And then we have Sirius. But Venus is the brightest that seems like a star that is shining in the sky. For the ancient ones, Venus was like this moving star that, um, that was bringing the light. It was the bringer of light from the sun to the worlds. So, um, because this uh, idea of uh, the star bringing the, the light from the sun, they related the idea of bringing the beauty, the consciousness. It was the bringer of light here on, on earth the creation of beauty of all the things. This is why all the other cultures, all the cultures used to call this planet the bringer of light. For sure you have heard how Phoenicians used to call it. Um, that was Inanna Ishtar. It was the brightest light. It was the mother bringing the clarity and the, the beauty to this world. So for the Persians, it was Anahit. And for the Mediterranean people, it was Tanit. For Egypt, of course, is Hathor. So for the Egyptians, it's Hathor. And for the Greeks, Aphrodite. And, um, and for the Romans, Venus. So the Greek people used to call this star also Phosphorus. That means the one that brings the light. So the Romans used to call it also the one that brings the light, and they call it in Latin Luciferus. Luciferus is Lucifer, is the name of Lucifer. So just to take the idea of what is Lucifer in our cultures, let's remember that this name is an epithet, is a surname, no surname, nickname, sorry, it's like a nickname um, for, the, um, for this planet. So in Latin, lux means light and ferus means the one that brings. So the one that brings the light is lucky ferus. Hmm? So the reason why we call the devil as uh, Lucifer is because in the first moments, in the first traditions, the one that we now call um, the devil was the first kid, the first son of God. He was the first angel that was helping by bringing the light to each one of the planets. So he was doing that until there was a moment that itself, he said, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do it in my own. So God said, how it's your own, your, your own way. So Lucifer said, well, it's through the opposite. So it created the opposite side, which is the darkness. So that's how he, he tried to do it as an enemy, as in the opposite side. Hmm? Uh, and that's in the Middle East, they call that uh, the, the one that is against someone, they call it shaitan. And shaitan means, uh, it was, is the origin of the word Satan. Okay, so that's why they started to call it like this. So it's not, um, it's not that um, Venus is related with this, it's just a story. Okay, that the names are related because Venus was doing exactly that to bring the light. Hmm? 
So remember that these beings doesn't exist by itself. They are concepts of things that happen in the universe and we humanize the stories to understand what is happening in the skies. Hmm? So um, Venus, from our point of view, will be related, uh, will be related with, the, with this light because it's the closest planet that we have. So besides the sun and the moon, Venus is the one that brings that light to the Earth and um, is related with the water because it rises, rises in, um, uh, in, the, in the horizon, in the seas, in the desert. So, so it was related with the hope of life and so on. So that's why we put that attribute to the star related to giving life to bring it, bring us the beauty, the, bring us the 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 life the the light from from the sun and so on remember that for us the humans we lived in this planet um we lived in this planet because of light we moved through light uh, we survived because of the day because we can see things so the group can transcend can live because of that because of because of the light so this is why for for us light is also a synonym of love of all being together hmm? and remember that for the ancient ones love is related with the ability of seeing the other and to reproduce so also remember that um venus is not only the first light or the light of the dawn but also is fertility is sexuality so it's important to understand why we relate sexuality with day because we have to go into the very origin of humans when we were animals basically and um uh and we we need to re we needed to reproduce um during the day in that time because otherwise there will be animals hunting us and when you reproduce, you lose a lot of energy. So you are not able to fight or it's like you are um, in a low um, moment and, and relaxed moment, let's say. So you needed light in order to see what is coming farther so you can get ready and prepare so you don't get eaten by an animal. Okay, so this is why um, they related light day with sex and fertility. Hmm? So now let's go into our subconscious and how it was shaped here, the idea of Venus being the love and the desire. So Venus will be the ability or the need of humans to expand to reproduce, to generate life. So Venus is related with this light, which is the one that takes us from one side to another, the one that pushes us, and is a summary of our whole life since the moment of sex and then the gestation, the, mo the moment of birth, the growing, the reproduction, and so on. And um, it summarizes the whole concept of life and fertility. So, um, uh, so what we are, um, what we are uh, doing with Venus is to, um, to project the same idea of impulse to create, to manifest in life, hmm? uh, but in different states of consciousness. So at first would be reproduction and sexuality, but then it starts to change into fertility, um, into love, into uh, into ideas, philosophy, and so on. So, are the different types in which we go, we are going to express the pulse of life, the inner fire that moves us. Hmm? So, remember, if Venus is the one that brings the fire, sorry, that brings the light, this means that. Um, that uh, Venus is the one that brings the fire to 
intensify to enlighten the inner potential that we all have within. And this inner fire is what we call usually Kundalini, is the energy of life that enlightens and push the transformation of our inner self, enlightening our inner power. So the first fire, the first part of the fire is the physical one, which is related with the, with the strength, with the power of activating something. Hmm? And by this power of, of, of action. And then also incarnates the sexuality, the reproduction. Okay. So that's what, um, what then become, becomes in, um, in sensuality. Hmm? So the fire comes into action. First, the action goes into reproduction. The reproduction goes into sexuality and the sexuality evolves into sensuality. Hmm? And that's how the fire starts to go up. So when you go into sensuality, sensuality, remember, comes from the word sensus. That means senses. Okay, so sensuality is not like sexuality, which is about the genitals, it's about the perception of the things, it's about the five senses and how you perceive the world. So this is the moment when the desire starts in this fire. The desire is the willing, uh, is willing to receive information through the touch, through the smell, through the mouth, through the eyes, and so on. It's not about sex. It's about perception. For some people, uh, food can be sensual, uh, um, smell can be sensual, music can be sensual, okay? Um, so that is the sensuality that gives birth to the desire. Hmm? So from the solar plexus down, the desire holds the sensuality of senses, the sexual need of reproduction and the action itself. Hmm? So, the, so once we go out of the solar plexus and we go up to the heart, the passion is the one that starts to activate. So passion is the, the, the will of giving, of sharing. This. The passion is the strength of sharing, of giving things. And below the desire is the need of having things, of perceiving things. So from the plexus down, it's all about desire to have things for me. And from the heart up, we have the passion, which is to give from me. Hmm? So from this point, the fire stops consuming things, making it into ashes, and it starts to enlighten and give heat to everyone and light to everyone. Okay? So this is why from the from the plexus down so the stomach the um, the intestines we feel the um, um, the need of um, uh, the need of consuming we need we feel the desire of having things and from the heart up we feel the passion of learning of sharing of doing things of of, of creating things and so on mm -hmm. So this gives us the idea that this energy moves by polarity. And polarity means that below we have an energy that is consuming, absorbing energy, and above we have an energy that goes and gives. And remember that the meaning of poles, of polarity, in, in Greek means axis. It's not two different things. It's only one thing with two sides, okay? one negative and the other 
positive. The negative energy below and the positive up is not that the negative is, is wrong, is bad. The negative means that it's absorbing the energy and the one up is expanding the energy. So the place where all the absorption of energy turns into expansion of energy is in between the solar plexus and the heart. Okay, that moment, that place is where everything turns in a different uh, direction. So the energy of Venus is the one inviting us to find balance, axis, in between the two different fires, the fire that consumes and the fire that expands in ourselves. You cannot turn off one of the fires in order for the other one to turn on. You need both of them in order to, to work, in order to create, to manifest. So what we have to do is to know how to handle it, how to manage this energy so it can move properly. Hmm? So here we have the two faces of Venus. The two faces were Lucifer and Satan. Hmm? So remember that Lucifer is the concept of giving the light. And Satan is the concept of absorbing the light and using the matter, consuming the matter. So now what happened? That usually because we come from monotheistic and polytheistic traditions, we usually like to blame to divinities, to entities, to demons, to beings for the things that we don't know how to handle ourselves. So now, for example, now when I say we enlighten Lucifer, the concept of the word is like turns a light in many of the people that has this subconscious way of thinking that says, oh my God, he's talking about the devil. And like alert, alert. Um, so sometimes when I start to explain about this and, and describe all these concepts, people used to, to, to think that I am talking about the demon and the devil and, uh, and so on. But, um, but it's not. Uh, basically, I'm speaking about concepts and words that were used to explain these things. Uh, but a thousand years ago, they started to use it in another way. And we are all like this, like brainwashed. There is no demon as we, as we know it in our traditions. Okay. See? Um, so when, just parenthesis, when we speak about, um, about uh, demons and entities that use us and so on, yes, they are, but they are natural beings from the fourth dimension that they eat energy from the living beings and so on. But, um, uh, but we cannot put into them a statement of organization, of hierarchy. Okay, because this is like trying to, to, to put into cockroaches or some raccoons, I don't know, uh, the structure of a government um, when they are trying to eat our garbage. Okay, um, so that's it. So the darkness. Uh, uh, is useful for the universe because they are they 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 have their own job their own uh, we we need them for some things. The problem is that some of them they go beyond the, their limits of work and um, but most of the times it's because we don't know how to handle our own energy so we let them use us. Okay, so that's it. So now about we following the light or using the matter, which is Lucifer, Satan. In our only point of view of life, we do that all the time. When we do that, 
when instead of following our passions in life, what we do is to relay all our life to our needs. So, for example, when we know our passion, we know what we want to do, we know where we want to go, and we say, this is the place, this is the goal, and suddenly I say, no, but I cannot go there because I need to work unless I'm not going to be able to eat. I need to work eight hours a day in this place that I don't like just because maybe I will die. Or, oh, I have this knowledge that I can do it all by myself. I can be free. I have to get out of these relationships. And But I don't know if I'm going to find someone. Maybe I have to, to be to grab what I found, what I found and just stay here, even if it hurts me. That's attrition to your own self. That's Satan. So regarding Venus, the planet is teaching us that it's only ourselves that we are that we are denying and committing treason treason to our own self when we leave behind our passions in order to just follow our needs is our daily betray, betrayal. So how can we solve this? Remembering that our needs are the fuel for our passions. That we don't have to eliminate our needs. We need to know how to handle them. Can you know now that we are creating the spirit of Satan every time that we betray our own heart? So when we know how to handle our needs in order to expand our passions is when we can connect all the energy together and that's the moment when we call the whole pattern as love. Love is the way in which we call this eternal energy that uses the needs in order to create, to push our passions. And I know that <clears throat> sometimes it's difficult to understand for some people because it's so cliche, the idea of thinking, uh, Yes, but how can I really manifest this just by thinking? Because I have to work to get stuff and so on. And something that may, most of people forget is that to say in this concept is that, yes, you have to work. You have to do things. The energy is about movement. If you don't move, if you don't do stuff, uh, nothing will happen. It's not about Co-creation is not about thinking and, oh, that's it. Co-creation is about co-create, to do things. And then they come back. But you have to move. You have to do things. You have to work. Love is free energy. But in order for it to move freely, you have to move. So it's not about, oh, I have to eliminate what I don't like about my job and so on in order to follow my passions. No, it's about how to put that together to know how your needs are able to fulfill your passions. But in order to get there, you have to go, go out of the idea that you need to choose in between one or another. 
So these two things are one. This polarity is one, all connected by love. And what this means, that if I don't love my needs, I am not gonna be able to expand my love in the passions. I have to learn to love what I am here, my work, my sexuality, my way of eating. I have to learn to love the relationships, the, the, the attachments, everything. When I start to know how to love this, then I will be able to start to expand the love in my passions. Let's go to the information for today. The vibration for today is D. The statement for today is I am the balance of the axis. The code for today is West. The last spatial uh, direction is where everything ends. The ultimate one or destiny by con contraposition it is the opposite direction to the rotation of the world and thus it's what it's re released let go where the stars in the sky disappear therefore the place of burial of death of submer submerging and for that of water and the oceans. Let's go to the alignment. Sit comfortable, close your eyes and start to touch, caress, stretch your body. And yawn. Being aware of each part of it. And once you did it, we focus on our breathing. Take a deep breath. I start to become aware of the body I find myself in the room where I am, the house, the building, the village or town, the country, the continent, and the whole planet. I take a deep breath as I feel present here and now in my physical body. I take a deep breath, becoming the room. I take a deep breath, becoming the house. I take a deep breath, becoming the town. Take a deep breath, becoming the country. I take a deep breath, becoming the continent. Take a deep breath, becoming the planet. I am the earth.
I watch in front of me and I see the sun, its light and the heat on my body as I perceive the moon spinning around me. I watch in front of me, Mercury close to the sun, Venus, and behind, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, and way far in the horizon, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. I am the solar system. Take a deep breath. And I see the planet Venus in front of me, shining, reflecting its light on me, reflecting its love, its beauty. I extend my arms towards the planet and I grab it between my hands, bringing it to my chest putting it within my heart. I feel the heat of Venus, its fire expanding from my heart to every direction. I feel how this planet expands, taking my entire body with its fire, with the heat, filling myself with love. With every breath, I enlight this fire. I observe this fire, bringing my lower part all into ashes, my feet, my legs, genitals, waist, And I recognize there my biggest needs in life. What are my biggest desires? What are the desires that tired me? to the life, what needs I am attached to. I observe them, I become aware of them. And I smile to them, I smile at them.
recognizing that they are the tools, the energy that I need to run my life. I send all my love to them. And I see how the lower fire turns my needs into ashes, making them into the fuel of my life. Take a deep breath as I push all this fire towards the upper part of my body through the heart and lightning, bringing the heat the light, the clarity to my head, to my arms and hands, my chest. I visualize here my passions. What are my passions in life? I recognize them as I see that they are the fire, the light that impulse me to accomplish my purpose in life. I become aware of my passions and I impulse them, irradiate them towards the world. It's like this as I recognize that love is the energy that gives balance to my axis. I am love. I am the balance of the axis. I am the balance of the axis. I am the balance of the axis. I am love. I know. Take a deep breath and from the heart bring this consciousness all over the body, caressing, stretching and yawning. And each one at its own time, come back here and now. Thank you everybody for being there as always and see you tomorrow at the same time.